a lot of people, I think, have gotten the understandable impression that my sort of critique of scientism, uh, scientism if you want in quotes, um, is sort of a slippery slope back to religion. I don't believe that it is at all. Um, although I think that some people who sort of are of the sort that they need to have some sort of road map for things that can be coherently read, I think they might assume that I'm doing that, because if I'm going to argue science out of existence, which I'm not trying to do, but some people seem to see it that way, uh, then we have to find some other road map to use. That is possible. It's possible that we will f have to find another road map. And instead of going back towards religion, what I'm simply saying is we have to sort of cast around for another road map or another type of search or another set of tools. We've seen the limitations of science as a tool, or at least I have, I, or at least I've concluded, erroneously or not, that science has limitations to what it can explain. Um, so, rather than just going back to the tools that we abandoned, why don't we cast around for another set of tools? And I'm not going to say that I've found anything yet, but what I've sort of come across is some interesting hints. One of them is, uh, as anyone who's watched these videos can say, is philosophy. Um, whatever that's supposed to mean. I like the old ancient Greece, uh, the ancient Greek uh, definition, philosophia, love of knowledge. Um, that's uh, where you try to integrate science, philosophy, everything, epistemology, all together in one big thing. Um, that's one interesting speculation, one interesting tool that we can use to make sense out of the universe. Um, another tool, which I think is for some reason suppressed in our society in spite of superficial appearances to the contrary, is intuition. Now that's one that people really shy away from. Intuition. They say, oh my god, you do, you do realize where that's going, where that could land you, eh? You know, it's completely irrational, etc. Well, yes, <laughs> I do understand that. And I do understand uh, the potentially explosive implications of exploring intuitions. But, I will tell you this. It is a tool that I don't think the philosophical discourse has ever adequately explored. And I do see it as a, um, a tool that cries out for exploration, and we have the means at hand to start such explorations as individuals whenever we feel like it. You'll notice that most of these philosophical discussions on YouTube involve males. It's been my opinion that many males think along a certain line and many females think along lines that are quite different from that. Women, some women at least, see the world, see the universe, see existence, life itself, intuitively and experientially and I suppose atavistically to an extent that it almost defies male understanding. Um, this is this idea is as old as the hills um, that women are somehow much more intuitive than men I won't go so far as to say that that's the case because I've met plenty of very sort of logical, linear thinking cold females in my life but if you want to go looking for someone who thinks 
in a completely intuitive and atavistic way, and you're a male, <laughs> um, just if you want to start out on that path of exploring the intuitive way of looking at things, of experiencing anything, find yourself a woman to study. Um, I understand how much trouble I'm going to get into uh, by bringing this up, but I don't particularly care. Um, I have actually made a study of this for as long as I can remember, and I think it is a tool that is extremely useful in trying to avoid things like um, religion or solipsism when you're trying to leap beyond the coldly logical way of looking at the universe. Um, the female mindset or a particular type of female mindset. It's alien territory, but it's very, very fascinating and useful uh, in terms of exploring the various alternative ways of experiencing reality. Where does one begin to even explore this sort of thing as a male who thinks like a male, uh, who thinks like stereotypically like a male, I guess? Well, uh, there's no time like the present, I guess, trying to figure out how uh, that sort of thinking works. And the reason why I think it's actually a lot more useful than, say, um, philosophy or uh, science is that females, women of all sorts, religious and adamantly atheist, um, even I would call some hardcore feminists, follow this intuitive experiential type of mindset, or simply exist in this experiential uh, mindset. You don't have to be atheistic or philosophy-oriented or new-agey to, to, to feel this way. That is a tool that is readily to hand and available for anyone who has sufficient curiosity to explore it, and you have teachers all around you. We take the split of the genders, the mental, emotional, and experiential split of the genders to be so absolute that we sort of ignore the, the differences. We tend to see, we tend to otherize each other. The genders tend to do that. That's fine. I don't think I could ever really become a female in the way that I see the world, but I'm fascinated by that way of seeing the world. There's a tool which um, is right there in front of you that can at least take you a little bit farther in understanding consciousness, reality, etc., than both science and philosophy ever could. Thank you.